I think we have a pretty good chance to qualify. Even though I'm saying it with those words when it doesn't really sound confident in, it's just because we haven't played an official game in a long time. It's the first tournament of the year, and of course it's the main year, which is even more important for everyone in the team and me personally. It's always a little bit more nervous to it, like it brings more excitement, but also you're a little bit afraid to lose. And that can hurt you, but in the same time, I think it also can boost to become even better. I'm confident, but I can't say we're, we're gonna go here and win the whole thing. We're so far behind in the three different stages that I have to be realistic and we have to start taking one step at a time. We had a pretty long break, but not too long. Directly in January, we had a boot camp directly to start off the year with just playing CS. And after that, we had been playing a lot online. We had like semi online boot camp more, and we've been playing even more personally, like individually and all that. I come and see a come and till him that I'm doing my best to Man can't see so after man has sat in <laughs> Sadly, we didn't really have a boot camp before this one, but I'm pretty satisfied with it and all the expectation and you know how much we put into it. I know we can always put in more, that's what everyone says, but you're also a human being, you have other obligations in life and you have to remember that, that you have to make everything work. And uh, I think that we managed to make things okay for this tournament. As some people might have noticed, I'm now sitting in the middle uh, of the team when playing. But don't worry, I'm not the in-game leader or anything. It's just that I want to see other people's monitors more closely because I'm playing around Rest and Dennis a lot. Same with Lecro, so I want to have them on both sides of me. So that's why I sit in the middle. Hey, what's up? You gotta go for nice and straight. Or you, how are you feeling? I don't know. Uh, he looks. I will sit. Yeah, and I sit. Yeah, I sit this side. I want to sit this. He looks quite relaxed. Is quite it fine if I sit like this? Yeah. 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 However you feel. Okay, then, I'm, then I'm perfectly <laughs> comfortable now. We got the mirror image. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'll sit okay. like this. Whatever. Yeah. Whatever feels yeah. most comfortable. Right? Yeah. Yeah. When we got to know that we're going to play the Brazilian team Furia, uh, we were pretty excited, mostly because they've been playing very well on the minor, they upset it to make it through from the North America qualifiers, and they looked promising and we were just more excited to play them. We looked a little bit over demos and were me personally to get a, a vibe of how they are and how they work and so on, but they're a young team and you don't, you're, not, you're never sure what to expect when you actually sit there on server and play them. Uh, so we didn't really focus anything on like you know specifics or anti strats or anything like that, just to get just more of a vibe for them. So, of course, it's always a little bit scary to play those teams. You have basically no knowledge of them in general because, as a team for us and for many other of the top teams, they they travel all the time and play against each other. That it becomes like a, a normal thing to see them every other week. It feels like, but to play a team like them, you maybe meeting them or facing them maybe one to five times a year. And that's a little bit difficult because you don't really get a vibe, you don't really get an understanding, you don't even know how they react and whatnot. So if you ask me personally, it's always a little bit scary, but also you have to take in consideration with that new year, new tournament and all that, you know, it's happy to go around that, you know? So I think it's just, it's a little bit scary, but I'm very confident though.
The reason that NIP are here is because of their performance in London. Let's not forget that they managed to secure that and narrowly miss out on the legend stage themselves. It was MIBR who knocked them out, and now a South American team with a twist, Furia, are going to be taking them on to start their journey here in Katowice, Sean. We have no idea what this, this version of NIP is going to look like coming into this major. They haven't played a match, I think, since Lisbon, early think. December. Mm. Yeah, so. I saw an interview with Forrest and uh, Rez, and they were just like, yeah, we've just been doing strats, uh, boot camping. There hasn't been an official for NIP for a while. Art and Vinny rotate back in, and Art, he's gonna retake that back side of the site, get toward the van as well, and that means he can actually aggressively peek a position which they previously thought was clear. To me, that's the recipe for disaster against NIP, and it certainly is exactly that as the bomb dropped to the balcony, and just Forrest remains. Nice idea, but well held by Furia. Will focus their efforts, but waiting on the other side, of course, is Lecro. Jumping across, so well time flashbang will gain them access towards the bomb site. Lecro, if he gets one, that should be enough for his teammates to rotate over. It's an equal trade, though, so he's still on for Furia here. Lovely stuff from Forrest. He gets the kill through the smoke. I think we had a very good start. We knew what to do, and we had a pretty clear picture on how we wanted to manage the game. And I mean, the result was showing that we were pretty much dominant in the game. And it felt just like we had control over the game. I don't think anyone was nervous. You see that they're not that experienced. Sometimes in, it, it, nothing happens, you know, but if you play against a team like FaZe, Astralis and whatnot, you can get two entries, but then it could be like two seconds later, you lost three people because of that. So it's a little bit like a question mark regarding them, but I think it's cool and nice that they get opportunity to play like against us and other teams. I think it's a good experience for them. It's all come together. It's looking good. Dennis closing out of Cicerato. It's all under our boy Vinny. He's got that thin crust Manhattan pizza. Leco takes him down and Abel J falls next. It is 16 to 6. Personally, for me, just waiting till this second game was starting wasn't that big of a problem because, like, when I'm on tournament, I usually play very late, so it wasn't really affecting me personally. But you can feel in your body that you were tired, you know, because you've been sitting and waiting and you haven't really done anything. <laughs> Nice, oof, yeah, oof. flick. Oi, oi, oi. Flick of the wrist, flick, flick, hug it, hug it. Mer, 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 up, up. Nice, vänster, 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 vänster. Där, höger, höger. Up, lite till, höger, lite, en. Där. Nice. Ooh, dear, look. It is time for our final affair of the challenge stage, round two. And it is going to be none other than the ninjas in pajamas taking on the renegades. They do have a smoke grenade though. Yeah, exactly. That could become problematic. Azza has a kit as well, but Get Right and Lecro have frags and they're not stopping. Azza falls as well now. That's going to be the smoke on the ground. And now Grap, the man with the moustache, doesn't really have too much of a plan or a leg to stand on res. Don't do be silly. This should be it. No. Oh, Lias, this is that. They're actually. They're, they're, they're going to get a plan, surely not. They're going to do. Uh, what is happening what's, right now, Alex? Hello? Okay, NIP now, you know, three versus one. The, on the B site, JKS is now trying to work his way back in. Bomb down, weapons acquired, at least for Dennis. Two frags for Forrest, they had nothing. There's no way JKS expects a second player at bench right now. He's checking everything but bench. I can't believe NIP, they, they, they should have done this. They have done this, oh. get right with the Glock. And we're stupid for underestimating NIP. We didn't really know what to do with how aggressive they were in the middle. Uh, I think that we didn't really have any control on middle as CT, which is very strange because we usually have that. So I, I think there was a little bit with that whole thing that we were waiting, people were tired and the brain wasn't really there, you know, they were just not really thinking like it usually does, like in practice, other official games. So I think that could have affected it, but in the same time, they played a great game and they deserved a win in the end. And uh, it was on ourselves that we didn't perform that we should have. Shots being exchanged. JKS catches Get Right. That's his dual wand. And now the Molotov forces another fight. But look at Forrest. He's so brave. Goes Rambo up the ladder. 
damage, but no cigar. Jacob's the one to find the double kill, and they have time for the plant come over from the B site. And we do see Lekra starting to aggress towards short. What? Gratisfaction. He can't stop getting in headshots, and now it's all on Forest. I think Renegades might have done it, but I should shut up because Forest has found three already. The legendary name. He had mages taken away from him in the past. And now here in the challenger stage, he's not going down without a fight. Three, looking for Azza, but that's enough. He does it. We got to know our next opponent, Wind Strike, around 2 in the morning. And we came to the hall to like 2.30, I think it was. And I think that most of us just went directly to bed. I know I went to play some deathmatch and aim bots to make myself better and prepare tomorrow. The day after, we did talk a little bit about the game, what maps we can expect and whatnot. We didn't really do anything specific. Vita coming in here. I'll be interested to see where it lands. It is going to be trained by the looks of things. Train again. Interesting because you just finished talking about the fact that Windstrike beat Fnatic on it. So That's a good point. They've already played it in this event. Even though it's their strongest map, it's also our strongest map. And uh, we had the feeling we could beat them on it since it's our best as well. Wayman now gets the AK-47. He wants to push towards that lower ramp. Oh, Flash just got both. No. What? That's so lucky. Man. Wow, that is insanely lucky. Flash just went both directions. I thought that might actually give Forrest the jump because he was going to peek on the back of this. And whoa, that it just fired into it. Low HP, he went down, but it's all on Forrest. He's found the kill on Waylander. Now he plays the ball. And we talk about this high side. So powerful. Doesn't have the yeah. Molotov has to go for the peak and World, and it was indeed committing. <laughs> The, the worst thing for us in the win strike game was we didn't have good economy at all. They reset us like two or three times and uh, we tried some force uh, tactics uh, with low buys and uh, it doesn't really pay out as often on train. I think that was the main issue. <laughs> Lacro gets aggressive to try and find it, but back the other way. They thought that pick was enough. Catching a rotation off, perhaps it was going to be someone leaving the A site that was going back over without information. They were wrong to assume because Boomich down below shuts down three. I think we still have good chances uh, to come back from this, even though it's we're one, two down. Uh, so this is best of threes now. It's not as much uh, random as it is before. So I think as long as we play our game and uh, I, I believe in our map, we'll play well. Maybe something magical will happen where they have to switch to a pistol and that saves him. Well, he's dead now. Never mind. The helmet did absolutely nothing against the AK-47. Lacro gets one on the AUG back, but then it's all immediately after. Win strike because they are about to swing the winning strike, it seems. Get right the one they have to find and find no more. They know where he is. Double smoke, why not? At this point, with a minute and 20. To limit his position, tries to flash himself back through, but it's over. 16-6. <laughs> After a rough few games, for example, against Wind Strike, which is a hard loss to have, what we mostly try to do is figure out what went wrong first so we can eliminate if we have stupid discussions about something that m might not be relevant uh, to improve on or so we try to figure out which mistakes we did if, if it's something we can fix if it's not then don't put your thoughts to it and then we just figure it out and then move on oh man yo i feel like the champion oh man yo i feel like the champion oh man yo i feel like the champion i make sure they know me Never forget me and made it because they let me made a lane and I played the game. I couldn't stay the same. I had to change up, get my change up before I lost my brain. Barely here to be so peace. Think I need a breeze. Somebody pray for me. The NIP we're expecting more out of, and they have no more chances to kind of hide away that level that they can play at. His now Lacro's also been tanked down heavy. Rez 
The player they desperately need to deliver a big performance here has found himself a kill, but they're simply nowhere near enough time to posture anymore. They've got to force the bomb down. In doing so, Rezik to take some damage from the Molotov. Just 50 percent remains, but he's going to be switching across to the head of Crush. And he's so close to clutching this round out. One bullet will seal it up and Rez makes soup out of Vega Squadron. More pressure applied when they have the opportunity of advancing rather than being eliminated. That nade slows him down in the fire. Oh my god. <laughs> All right. We didn't really find our groove as uh, terrorists on the starting side. and uh, But once we got to the CT side, I think uh, picking up a few rounds, we know how good we can be on overpass CT, and we just kind of went with it. But I think it was a bit far too late, maybe, because even though we managed to tie it up, we still haven't figured out how we want to approach the T side. So once we got over to the second part of the overtime, we had no chance. But I think we took the momentum from that map going into the second one. But he's obviously going to wait for the smoke to clear, but I don't even think it's going to matter if this flank is coming in slowly, but surely Force is burning. He's going to come down the ladder. That's going to be an easy kill, and it's a wipeout. Vegas Squadron, they take map one. Having played the Vega and they knocked us out before in the major didn't really matter that much to me anymore. Uh, what's happened in the past is in the past. We did beat, beat them the last time in the major, in the face it major. So I think even though it's a bit fun to have that matchup, it was not something that was in our heads. Up next, train and map NIP couldn't manage to fathom versus win strike. Will it happen again against a different CIS opposition? Time off the clock, Hutchie's close up. Great kill from Rez. He's gonna get a follow-up as well. Now pushing forward, seizing his moment, and Rez has three. NIP is gonna take this pistol round and Rez finishes it off. The Augur M4, then I'm pretty sure he gets at least two kills. Just such is the FAMAS life. Yeah. He was probably so frustrated, that's the weapon he had. Only one player left, it's JR, and NIP respond, a 16 to 6. Comparing Train and Mirage from Overpass, I definitely think that we were more awake and alive as a team. It real, you could really feel the energy on Train and Mirage, uh, and some, at some point uh, on Overpass as well, towards the later stages. But I think everyone was more ready and hungry to play and eager to play uh, those games. And I think it showed as well, even though Mirage was pretty close and could have most likely gone either way, uh, but we managed to cl clinch it out, so I think that's what changed. Yoink. He's gonna do it. <laughs> but why not just flank this B bomb site because access is closed here. Regardless, the knife kill is lovely for the cash, and he follows it up with a scout. Okay, I take it all back. Rez knows what he's doing. Into the B bomb site, we go. Great shot from Get Right with the Glock, and now they're in. This is gonna be tough, but still strong, powerful weaponry. There's one over towards Get Right Corner, and he's got him, and the AUG is going to do work as well. Tony Black, one-on-two situation. Oh, and he's whiffed his nade. It goes from bad to worse, and there's Lacro piercing the head with the AUG. Unbelievable. Five Glocks. That's Rez, who needs to read the play. This is going to be difficult. Dennis is going to find no one in mid, which is tough. He's got a P250, not a great weapon. Rez is reading and watching his flank. There's the peek from Chopper. Great win from Rez. And now it's all going in the way. Get right with two kills with that AK. There's a smoke for the bomb, and that's last-ditch effort. And it's not even going to get there. Get right with four kills, putting his mark on this map. That ramp before Vega even realized. Oh, what? <laughs> That was midair as well. At least one of them was midair. What the hell is going on, Rez? I love everything about this. You're a beast! Do what you can with what you have, and that op is providing cover for the pistols to get up close, but get right. He's outplayed him. Rez had that first kill, and then Get Right jumps into a perfect position. Molotov gonna come out, he's gonna find himself another. He's repositioned, they have no idea. Oh, great shots from Get Right. The legends for NIP are stepping up down the stretch, and that's exactly what you'd expect. Having a VT Gaming in our last match is definitely a tough one. I think they've proven to everybody at this point that they're not here to mess around. <laughs> it's going to be a hard-fought battle, but I think uh, we should be able to take this one. But I'm going to be careful. I made a mistake before.
As Four said earlier, they are unpredictable and uh, we haven't really seen them play before and they played very well against the other top teams. Uh, so it was scary but also a good feeling. In the first map, uh, we just played our game and won it pretty easily. In the second game, we struggled a lot. It was mostly co with the communication, I would say, and nerves. When the nerves get to you, the communication easily gets bad. Heart of round 16. Kaze is going to be picking up a couple, but it's by and large going to be going the way of Nip for the time being, as Forrest is going to allow himself to as well, leaving Orman to try and repel the onslaught, try and cave in the CTs. Forrest is feeling it. That's three kills with the USP. That would have been a big kill to have. No utility for Dennis. Looking for this one frag on the Alper, who's just trying to distract. Kaza is playing it well. No peek and a double kill for Dennis. NIP continue to reign supreme. On the third map, we had a good lead and then they came back. We did a few four spies and Candia struggled with how we were gonna anti-strat them. They only hit the sights, they never really did anything unexpected, but we still struggled. It felt like we had the map the whole time, we just had to get there and it got close, but we got it. The time is on his side for, the, for now, but he's going to go for that bomb plant, going to force it down. Put Freeman into a position where he needs to push him. Will the 8 HP be enough? Oh! Yes, get right, drills the head! Coming from above, he's not ready, he swings up, he is traded. But Kaze has to go quick, and he's never going to expect this. There's an easy kill. There's a free kill. There's the bomb. And that might just be the deciding factor for NIP. 15-10, Advent in a one-on-three. Has 40 seconds to try and save the Asian team. First brace, not on point. Teams we're going to play in the new land stage, we feel very confident against because they play the way we want people to play. Most of the teams play very structured. Uh, you know all the players pretty well. But of course it's going to be hard. It's kind of day-to-day -day thing. Who's having the best day is going to win the game. I mean, we already feel a lot more confident. The nerves have kind of settled. Uh, so I think we're going to play a lot better now in the new Lennon stage. My expectations for the new Lennon stage is that we're going to pass, but I don't think it's going to be easy. I think we could lose a game or two, but hopefully we go 3-0 and the nerves just uh, gets us there. <laughs>